Hello everyone, welcome back to Speaking Spurs with me Kieran talking all things Tottenham and today we are talking about that Premier League victory over Newcastle United which ended up looking like a closer game than it really was, finished 3-2, a um, little bit of a possible shaky ending but it's a game we were really in control of the whole way through so that's what we're going to be discussing today for your daily update so welcome to speaking spurs if you haven't done so already please subscribe to the channel like and comment below but without further ado let's jump into it and talk about the game itself so obviously before the international break we got a victory um things again seem to worry us as we've reported in the last video about the two possible cases of coronavirus. Now, the club still haven't come out and said which players those were. Obviously, we spoke about and the press had all spoke about the fact that it was led to be Sonny and Brian Hill. Now, we we're all shocked to see Sonny in the starting lineup and Brian Hill to be on the bench. There you go. But the club have come out and basically said that in the build up, there were two players that came up positive. They were false positives. They'd been tested several times in the lead up to the game and it was negative testing the whole way through. So there we have it with regards to that. So if we just run through the lineup now that we had, Larice was in goal, um, the fullbacks Emerson Royale and Sergio Reguilon, centre-back partnership of Romero and Eric Dyer. Oliver Skip partnered pierre Emil Huibia in the deeper midfield positions with Tangi Undombele, Lucas Mora, and Son operating across the next bank of three with Harry Kane up top. Now, in this game, we use no substitutions at all. And I will give you my opinion on that a little bit later on in the video. Um, but let's talk about the game itself. Um, we knew it was going to be, I say a tough test, but it ended up not being. It was, it was actually easier than I thought it was going to be. But obviously, we know Newcastle have just been taken over. There was the boost of that and the sound. Oh, my goodness. It is the loudest St. James's Park has sounded for a very, very long time. Obviously, the fans are excited. Um, Steve Bruce, obviously, is 1,000th game as a manager. Massive credit to him. And then the players have got to fight for their lives as well. But it being at home, the crowd, the way it was, the game didn't start well for us. You know, we're less than three minutes into the game. We're already 1-0 down. And you're thinking... It's going to be one of them days. It's the worst time to play a team. Um, we obviously had the boost of having pretty much as close to a full squad as we were going to get, you know, barring the injuries. But we had some players back that were on the bench. Um, so, yeah, we got hit. And it was actually quite poor from us. It wasn't just the fact that, um, you know, Newcastle had attacked well. I don't think they really had. I, I think we were quite sloppy. I think the crowd basically got Newcastle to goal. Uh, they were very, very loud. They, in fact, they were incredible. You know, it, it's only something that we we understand ourselves. I think we have a great crowd um, at White Hart Lane, Tottenham Hotspur Stadium, whatever you want to call it these days. Um, so we know too much about that. Newcastle fans have always been ridiculous. You know, football, they live, eat and breathe it up there. Um so they basically got them the goal. I will say Callum Wilson's desire to get in front of Romero was great. I do think it was pretty poor from Romero to let him pass. Wasn't strong enough. Wilson just had more desire. Obviously, he's been out recently. So back in the squad and really hungry to get back on, you know, the Premier League goal trail. So I think he done well personally there. Um, but, you know, it didn't take us too long to get back into the game. Tangi Undombele with an absolute fantastic shot. He uses the defender as a marker to guide round and just left the keeper with no chance whatsoever. Um, what can I say? And from there on, we just kind of took control of the game. It was really important with the players we had in there. I thought Tangi, um, Lucas Mora, Sonny and Kane, I thought they linked up really well as a front four. I, I think there was a lot of hard work going on there, especially with Tangi and Dombele. I thought he was fantastic in everything that we did. I felt went through him. Um, you know, and then, then we got the other goals. Kane manages to get a goal, which he took really well, to be honest. Sonny's goal, he's not going to miss from there. Although, <laughs> I, I didn't understand why he had to, to slide to put the ball in the back of the net. But look, we were in control of the game for pretty much the rest of it. They made their substitutions, didn't make too much impact. Um, and listening to Newcastle fans, so 
that night I was I was in the car listening to Talksport Radio and there was a lot of Newcastle fans on there complaining about the lack of a plan B. They didn't feel like any of the players had um, set out roles to do within the game. And we know too much what that's been like before where we're watching games thinking they just basically threw the men out there and expect them to do a job. And that's kind of how it was. There wasn't really any game plan for Newcastle. The crowd were the only thing keeping them going. And essentially, from what has been a sport, a poor Spurs team so far, you know, the end of last season and in some of the games this season, Newcastle were just outdone in every department. You know, they started off, they attacked well, but ultimately their defence let them down. Um, their midfield weren't good enough, but I will credit our midfield for, you know, getting in their faces, pressing, breaking them down and making it difficult for them. And essentially, we just had to shut the Newcastle crowd up. And I think after a while, that kind of happened. So uh, let's just talk about some individual performances and we'll talk about the Diarone goal um, as we talk about the individual performances. So Lloris... Couldn't really do anything about the goals at all. Uh, Wilson's header away from him. Eric Dyer's own goal. Beautifully put into the back of the net. Gave Lloris no chance whatsoever. So it's really hard to, to talk about him again because he didn't really have much to do. Um, and we don't mind about that. Emerson Royale. Um, I mean, he was okay. A, a bit shaky at times. And I'm not... There's a few things I'll put it down to. It's the fact that, you know, he's still getting to know the Premier League, still learning the language, learning the players around him. The other thing that obviously held him back was the fact that he'd been playing for Brazil. You could tell that he'd had barely any recovery time. So at times he looked tired, he looked leggy, looked like he needed a rest. But he did some good things in the game. He had some good moments. Um... Yeah, I mean, he was sloppy in the build-up to, to Newcastle's first goal. Um... But I think with the fact that he played the international football, he was never going to start on the front foot with loads of energy. You know, you've got to get through essentially what you feel is going to be 90 minutes with Doherty injured. Um, you know, he had to he had to play the game. He had to get through it. So you're going to conserve your energy. Uh, and I think at times it meant he come undone a little bit. But all in all, considering the international break, I can't complain too much. We were left in a, a crappy situation, essentially. Um Reggion on the other side, I thought he started quite shakily, to be fair. Um, he didn't actually, you know, play much in the international break. So he should have been fairly fresh, but he did grow as as the game went in. And we got to see the better side of Reggion. Um, he, you know, he had great space moving forward down to Newcastle's lack of breaking our attacks down. Um, and I have to point out, obviously... He was one of the people that got the referee's attention in the build-up to the incident that happened on the pitch. Um, on the pitch, sorry. Off the pitch, in the stands. Uh, he did fantastically well to go over and convey what was going on from the fans to the referee. Um, we will talk more about that towards the end. I just want to you know, get through the initial Spurs stuff. Um, and then we'll have a conversation about the importance of what actually happened. Then we move on to Christian Romero. Well... I actually felt like of all our players, he was probably the poorest on the pitch, you know, and I think that that really comes down to the international breaks. So I think for Argentina, he was fairly good, to be honest. Um, he was he was really poor at times, wasn't strong enough for Wilson's goal, you know, just let him come across him, was completely out muscled there. He gave the ball away a lot. He actually lost possession 14 times throughout the games and that is really really poor for a guy that's meant to be good on the ball gets himself into space can handle things well so for him it wasn't a great day at the office but again I'm really going to put it down to the international football it's so hard to judge the lads that have been away especially the guys that have been in South America had to travel all that distance um, played really late had no recovery time so you've got to forgive it to a certain extent now the other centre-back Eric Dyer this guy cannot get a break. And I do feel really sorry for him because people have been right on his back up until the point where he gave away the free kick and then conceded an own goal. He hadn't really done anything wrong. He'd been solid again, winning loads in the air, making some good tackles, and then just has a moment of absolute madness. And if you watch the replay, the replay, the replays back in slow motion, you actually see that the, the ball comes over and he sees it very, very late as it drifts over the player in front of him. 
he goes to head it and unfortunately just heads it down into his own quad and then and, and then in it goes off his thigh sorry um heads it down gives Larice no chance whatsoever and I feel like a lot of Spurs fans gave him way too much grief based on one thing like yes ultimately it could have cost us but at the end of the day he saw the ball late reacted and you know he's just been unlucky there and I feel like quite a few times actually that he will have this moment that is almost kind of out of his control and then he gets slated for it. And let's not forget the performances he's already put in this season. I think he's actually been very good and he suits the he suits the partnership, him and Romero. I think it's bringing out the best in him. He's upped his game. I think not being in the England squad has really hit him hard um, and he's really stepped up. I, I think he's been good this season and it was just one moment. Yes, it could have ended up costing us. But ultimately, honestly, watch it back in slow-mo and, and you'll see that he sees it very late coming over and just tries to react and gets unlucky. Um, and obviously, we know his heading ability has been insane this season. He's won pretty much every header he's gone up for. So look, I'll leave that for you to decide. Comment below. Let me know what you think of the Dyer situation. But in my opinion, and you know, that's what it's about. I think he's been good this season. Um, moving on to the midfield. Oliver Skip, oh my God, I'm so glad that we didn't send him out on loan. What a revelation he's been. Another solid performance, lots of tackles, pretty much broke up any play of Newcastle's coming forward throughout the game once we took control of the game. Um, he was threading balls as well, linking up with the attack. You know, for me, he was one of the better players on the pitch throughout the game. And I think most people had a good game for Spurs um, overall. And... Look, he's been immense. And I think, you know, leading on to talking about Hoiberg next, I think Hoiberg has been better this season because of having Oliver Skip next to him. It allows Hoiberg more freedom. So he can do his defensive stuff, but he can get involved with that creativity, um, push himself on a bit more, link up more play, brings out confidence because he knows that he can take a few more risks. And there's someone back there to help mop things up if he loses possession. Um you know, I thought he was fantastic in when you actually look at his stats. He 99 passes he made and he only misplaced four of them, which, you know, I think is great. And he still managed to do the job that he always does for us. Um, the free ball for Kane's goal. Um, so this is what I'm talking about. He's now being able to be more creative. And, um, you know, I absolutely love him. Really do. Um, and I like the fact that Skippy means he can has more, have more freedom. It's it's something that we've been missing and waiting for. Lucas Moura, um, I thought he had a fairly decent game. He, he has those moments where if he was just a little bit more composed, we would get the best out of him. I mean, Newcastle couldn't hand him in a running sense. He was such a nuisance. You know, there are times where because of it, his head's down a little bit. He takes heavy touches. He loses the ball. But, you know, what a moment. Um, when he essentially went on that crazy little run, knocked it through, um, you know, played the ball out and we ended up scoring from it. I just think his gameplay sometimes is like his energy, his ability to dribble past people. It just creates things. He isn't the creator, but he builds up this play that pushes us in the momentum. He drags players with him. At times there are three players on him and then boom, he can just slot a pass out wide we cut a ball in, we have a goal. Um, so overall, I thought it was a good performance from him. Um, he obviously had the header from the corner, uh, Sonny's corner, where he hit the bar. You know, for a guy, he's not he's not incredibly tall, but he's got a great leap on him, a good head. Um, it's just a shame that that ball didn't go in. But yeah, for the third goal, his run, well, excellent, excellent. Just wish he had a bit more composure. Uh, we'll talk about Sonny next. Um Easy finish for the third goal, um, but he had to be in the right place. He gives us good energy. Uh, he's very important to the team. I'm so glad it was a false positive. I feel like we mostly play better when Sonny's in the side. He has a couple of games where he's a bit iffy, but everybody does. But I just, I love Son, and I still can't believe to this day none of the big, big clubs have come in for him. I don't know what it is. I don't know why they wouldn't want him, but I just think he's such a player, and I'm so glad nobody's come in for him. Um... And obviously, there's that connection between him and Harry Kane. Let's hope that continues and they get back to the way they were last season. Um, Tangi Undombele, what can I say? You know, he splits opinions. 
He's got so much ability, and I don't want to harp on about the stuff I always harp on about. I mean, there still were moments in the game where he went down in challenges, didn't get back up, was very slow. But I will say it was better than it has been. Um, his ability on the ball is fantastic. You know, once we we were in the last sort of like five, ten minutes of the game, he was still doing things that are unreal. You know, taking on players in the corner, holding on the ball, making sure we got possession. Um, took his goal really well. I feel like everything that was good about us came through him. You know, Skippy and Hoybier's hard work. And then the ball's in further up midfield and just... He did everything I wanted to do and he gave energy, which is something that he, he's really been lacking. I think with Tangi, he's one of these players, if you show faith in him and allow him to play more, he's happier, he's free. When he's in and out of the side, he doesn't get that match sharpness. And, and I really, really think that for him, it's his best so far this season. He covered so much ground as well. I was really impressed with how much ground he covered compared to how he has been you know, so far. And I think he's one of these players, the happier he is, the better he plays, the harder he plays and works for the team. So really impressed with his display. And then last but not least, Harry Kane. Um, Still not great, great, great performance, but I feel because the team played better, he played better as well. He was involved in more. There was some good link-up play. Um, he took his finish really well. Lovely little dink over the top of the goalkeeper. He's just got this great awareness of knowing exactly where the goalkeeper is and knows how to... to um, he knows how he's going to finish two, three seconds before he's even done it. Uh, his awareness is great. He had a few opportunities where he could have shot, but the angles that he was at, he assessed it. I mean, for the assist for, for Sonny... He was a little bit too far out, didn't take the shot on. He could have if he wanted. It would have been a difficult one. But he looked up, he saw that man, Sonny. He knew exactly where he was going to be running, slotted it in for him. So look, from him, much better. Got his goal, got an assist. It's exactly where he needs to be. Hopefully, that will build his confidence. And I wouldn't be too surprised if we saw Harry Kane go on a run of scoring goals now. That's just what happens with Harry Kane. Um, one of the things I will say about the team that I was really impressed with was... The covering, the pressing, how hard they worked for one another. The communication seemed better. Um, they seem like they're in a better place. Um, and looking at the fact that we didn't make any substitutions, I can only assume because the international break, some of these lads have played so many minutes, I would imagine a lot of those key players will be rested in some capacity for the um, Europa Conference League game. So, because we were in control of the game, having a lot of possession, it meant that our legs weren't stretched too much. We weren't having to attack as high. We weren't having to press as much because we had full control. We had way more of the ball than Newcastle did for long periods of the game. I mean, there was one point where um, when we were 3-1 up, we went on just this little passing streak and it was so refreshing to see. Decis decisions were being made quickly. They were passing the ball to one another in their little triangles, they would pass, they would move, they would receive it back, knock it to the next player. Um, and it went on for quite a while. And I think it was actually Tangi and Dombele that gave the ball away in the end. Um, I say gave the ball away, he was actually fouled. He took what I thought might have been a heavy touch and then he was taken out. And that ended that run of um, possession. But I just thought that little spell was everything we needed it to be. It was lots of little short passes. And that's something that we hadn't been doing too well over last season and certainly beginning this season. Our short passes seem to be so poor. Those sort of like 10 to 15 yard passes along the ground. They they were always hurried or if not, people hold on to the ball too long. And by the time they've played it, interceptions were made because it was too predictable. But there was just something about it. It was so much smoother, slicker. It was quicker. It was like the players knew where each other were going to be. And that, that was absolutely great to see. But back to the no subs, I can only assume because they were keeping possession well, weren't doing a lot of running, no one was getting too tired. There was no risk of injury there. It made sense to keep them on. So all those players on the bench, they stay fresher, ready for Thursday after the international break. And that's the only reason I can think of. He didn't make any subs. So it makes complete sense. I understand it doesn't risk any injury of those players coming off the bench that might need to play in um, the Europa Conference League. So... I will say bravo to Nuno on that one. Um, I thought, you know, it really, really worked and will help us come Thursday and then ready for the weekend because a lot of these players that need a rest after the international break, especially, 
especially the South American lads, they can now get their rest, um, which should see Damonson Sanchez come back in for Thursday. I wouldn't be surprised to see Rodon as well. Um, maybe they'll be the centre-back partnership. And it's not exactly too much of a downgrade. Like Davinson had been fairly good next to Dyer in the first few games. Um, Rodon has looked impressive for Wales, so I'll be happy to see what he can do. Um, so yeah, that was that was pretty much it for gameplay as well. Um, now let's talk about you know the more pressing issue that happened, and you know obviously a fan in the stands for Newcastle was having issues, and a lot was made about. Um, Eric Dyer and Reggion and, and their role in it and the referee but I would like to say more importantly than them the fans in the stand that took control of that situation got the players attentions and not only that there was a fan in the stand performing CPR for a long period of time before the defib got over there so massive massive shout out to whoever that person was in the stands performing that CPR really really important and pretty much potentially saved that guy's life in the stands so Credit has to go to that person before anyone else. And then obviously, you know, Reggion and Eric Dyer were very quick to react. We actually saw Dyer sprint across the pitch, was talking to the um, the medical team over on the other side for, for Newcastle, asking where the defib was, if they had one. And then once they realised what was going over, they were very quick to react and over there with the defib. Um, the referee, for, I thought, handled it really well, was in constant communication with what was going on. Um, the players were still on the bitch. Um, play was almost going to restart. They were looking at restarting, but the referee made sure one more time, went over to the stands to find out what was going on. The fans were like, absolutely not. You know, this situation is still going on. A police officer then come down and spoke. The referee made the right decision to get the players into the tunnel. Um, and then thank God the fan, we've heard the news, obviously taken to hospital and has has begun recovery, which is absolutely fantastic. You can't put a price on a life. Football just became a secondary afterthought in that situation. So fans, players, referee, the medical team, um, the NHS, everything, it was just handled in such a good way. Um, obviously, we heard David Ginola speaking, if anyone was watching the game through Sky Sports, talking about his own experiences, and that must have been really hard for him to be involved in that situation. So between all those people in the ground, the players, the referee, everybody, they basically saved somebody's life. Um, so, you know, massive respect to everyone and their involvement. And I can't stress how important it is. Defibrillators, not enough places have them. Um, plenty of places that I've worked have them. The place that I currently work hasn't got one. And we've actually been pressing the issue for a few weeks to make sure we get one in. And more than ever when I went into work I'm like you know we need to get one um, they really can save people's lives they are so easy to use they come with instructions in them you can even get them outside in lock boxes where you call a number or text a number you get a special code that unlocks um, that unlocks them and you can go from there um, if you haven't done before look it up online it is so easy look at CPR tips um, it is so important so yeah that's that's pretty much all I've got to say on that. So, well done to everyone there. Um, got sidetracked now. That's uh, kind of thrown me a bit. Um, yeah. So anyway, thanks for sticking around for that. That is today's um, daily update. And um, yeah, I'll be back with you tomorrow um, talking about any transfer stories and links. There was a few today that have come out, um, which I will talk about tomorrow. That will give us more to talk about. And uh, yeah. Thanks for watching the video. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, like and comment, and I'll get back to you if I can do. Um, stay safe, and as always, guys, come on you Spurs.